Hey, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do another comparison video of some stuff that I have lying around in my office. It's office. It's my office. It's an office. My wife uses this room too, so it's not mine. It's hers too. Anyway, so I got the Glidecam XR Pro and the Ronin S. Glidecam? Steadicam? What do you call it? Like, there's there's Neewers, there's Glidecams, there's Slidecams. In 2019? Why, man? Why would you want to get one of these? old-fashioned pieces of poop when you have these new fangled uh, motorized three-axis motorized gimbals you know uh, it's not like there's a huge price difference I think in the past maybe it was like you know you would probably spend a thousand dollars on a three-axis motorized gimbal but they've gotten way cheaper and there's a variety of models you know there's like ones that are you know for small cameras or medium cameras big cameras so you have a lot of options you know there's a range and there's a range of these too this is a pretty low budget model of glide cam is the xr pro it's somewhere around 300 new ish but they've got their highest end model i think is still the devon graham and i think it's about 800 now they're you know the price is a wash between these two things there's a lot of options you know and you can buy used etc cetera, etc cetera. so why you know would you even consider getting a glide cam type system anymore in the day and age of these things that's what we're going to talk about today you have to make a very conscious choice that the the look you're going for is the one is a look that you're going to get with the steady cam type system as opposed to the three axis motorized gimbal otherwise these are so much easier to get res good you know good enough results with and then the more you practice the better they're going to the better it's going to be uh and it's also easier to get a variety of different types of shots than you can get with this um it's more precise Eh, eh, mm. But that's a th you know sometimes you know people talk about what they don't like about the three-axis motorized gimbal look is that it's very robotic you know it's almost it's too perfect these have a much more robotic feel robotic meaning that it looks like C3PO is walking with it you know the clunky mother is bouncing all around no but it's it's much more uh, much more I don't know like it's on rails you know like it's a on a track and this one looks like there's somebody actually moving it through space but it, you know it looks like the camera's floating I think the floaty feeling is more pronounced with this and with this this one looks like the camera is just somehow being guided like by wires or you know something like that where this one like the camera is just floating floating like a butterfly um, like a leaf in the wind you can um, duplicate or replicate I should say um, a couple of different devices with a three-axis gimbal like you can kind of you, you know you can't totally replace a slider there's still some things that a slider are gonna do more precisely than you know a three-axis motorized gimbal but you can still get really smooth slider like shots with it whereas if you're trying to do a slider shot with this once again you have to be super careful you know make sure the horizon is level and um, you have to be super precise with how fast you're moving and I think with these kind of like the slower you go, it's almost, it's harder. So it, it works with inertia, it works with momentum. Whereas with the, the three axis, you know, the motors are doing all the work. So you can go as slow as you want, as fast as you want, and it's gonna smooth out your shots. What kind of stuff would you be working on that you, would, that you might prefer this? What they're typically for is you always have actors, you always have characters that, they're, that the Steadicam is following. You don't usually just have like an architectural shot or like product shots, like all those kinds of things. Like you can, you can use a steady, uh, you can use a three axis motorized gimbal to get those kinds of shots more precisely with a lot more control. Whereas with these, if you have an actor in it, that's typically what the audience is focusing on. They're not necessarily focusing on the background. So if there's a little sway, it doesn't matter because they're focusing on the actor. You know, when you have those dynamic shots where you're moving through space and you're moving relatively quickly, you know, at least at the speed of a walk, and you're following kind of dynamically what's going on, and you might even be moving through a through a space, picking up different actors or different characters as you move through. These are actually, in my opinion, you have more control. When you actually want to pan with this thing, you know exactly how it's going to pan. Like you, it's your hand on it, moving it just how you want. Uh, whereas with the three-axis gimbal, you have to dial in the setting. How quickly do you want it to move? So when you twist it, it pans, right? But see how far I twisted it before it started to pan? That's, you know, you have to dial that in in the settings, how much you want it, 
how fast, like, I mean, you could make it go faster, so in sport mode, it pans immediately. If, like, say your actor moves fast and you're like, oh, come on, come on, come on, and then it's not panning fast enough. With this, you, you can pan it as fast as you want to, and immediately, just by giving it a little nudge. And another thing, so maybe you're not shooting feature films, I know I'm not. Weddings, I still think these are super useful for weddings. They're really good for dancing. I think a lot easier to kind of control and move around one of these than it is one of those. And move quickly, like I said, um, to catch different subjects. Because, you know, you never know what you're going to be filming at a wedding. Like, you know, you'll be filming something and just kind of keeping your eyes open to see what other interesting thing you might want to capture. It's kind of like one eye on what it is you're filming and your other eye. It's helpful if you've got a lazy eye. Uh, so you can see two things at once. But, you know, you're always kind of looking for the next thing to film. So really any event where, you know, you, you need to make quick decisions, these could still come in handy. So let's talk about the advantages of or basically the pros and cons of using them, like what, like the difficult parts versus, you know, like some of the easy parts of each one. Like I alluded to at the beginning, these are just, you know, once you get them balanced, once you figure out how to balance it, balance it on the, the, the gimbal, it's way easy to just turn it on and start shooting without really knowing what you're doing uh, because the motors are going to do the work for you. These, on the other hand, take some practice just to get balanced. They're not really harder to balance either one. They're both relatively straightforward, but actually operating this one takes, uh, you know, takes some serious practice. They do say that you need to do the ninja walk with the three axis gimbal because what's cool about these is that they do take away the Z axis up and down mo movement. And you'll see a lot of tutorials on YouTube where they say you have to do the ninja walk with these. But if you watch Stefan something, I'll link to him. He has a lot of tutorials. So when I first got this, I watched him like all the time. He maintains that you don't have to ninja walk with this. You can just walk and it's actually better just to walk normally. You know, walk steadily, you know, don't be crazy and like try to, you know, march or something. But that is a big advantage of these is that you don't have that bouncing motion. I guess it's a trade-off, you know, sway versus bounce. One good thing also about the steady cam is that um, these you kind of have a limit in terms of the size and dimension of the camera. You know, if it's too if it's too long, you'll have a hard time getting the camera balanced and then also having clearance. So sometimes if the camera's too tall, like if you have a C300 or C100 or something, you might not be able to tilt it back. And you might not be able to get perfect balance because you need to be able to tilt the camera this way in order to balance it properly. But if it can't clear this back motor, you're not ever gonna get it 100% balanced. Um, whereas this, there's no real limitation on the form factor of the camera. You know, there's a weight limit, but there's not really a form limit. As far as like weight capacity, these can hold more weight. One negative with these is actually, so if you want to mount a monitor, I've never really been successful at trying to, at, at mounting a monitor on one of these things. Um, it does have a hole um, here where you could, you know, thread a quarter 20 uh, and then sort of rig up some way to mount a monitor. But I've never been able to get the balance right because you need to have it equal, you know, front to back. I know people can't, and you can do it. <clears throat> but I haven't been able to do it. And I haven't been able to figure out like a really good mounting method either. These, some of them have quarter 20s or three quarter or three eighths inch threads on them that you can mount directly to. Uh, or you can buy, like I did, kind of an accessory handle where you can mount stuff to it. It's got threads all over it. And then on the handle as well, it's got some threads. It's got a cold shoe. So it's easier to mount stuff to this, I think. Whatever you mount to it doesn't affect the balance. Basically, anything down here doesn't matter. You can put whatever you want on it. It doesn't affect the balance of the gimbal. Whereas everything affects, affects the balance of the glide cam. So whatever you do, top or bottom, it's gonna affect the balance. So it is kind of harder to rig it out, I think. Weight-wise, as far as um, your own, uh, like the weight on your body, they're pretty equal. One advantage with these is that you can hold them with two hands. You know, whether you get a side handle or a grip, another sort of grip, um, they have these rear grips now too, or you can just hold it with, you know, like a sword. I would say that these are easier to operate for longer periods of time without getting terribly fatigued. These are much heavier and harder to operate because you only can only hold it with one hand unless you get some sort of elaborate rig, some vest and stuff for it. But, you know, that's totally possible, but not always practical. So I'd say ease of use over time definitely goes to the three axis ones. One more <clears throat> point of comparison I would say is longevity. These, I think will last forever as long as they're 
you know, not abused. There's nothing in it that, you know, it could possibly get all gunked up in the bearings and stuff in the gimbal, I suppose. But there's no electronics in it, uh, no motors that are going to break over time, no batteries. So longevity is a no-brainer. These are going to last for a long, long time. Whereas with the Ronin, like, it can't even remove the batteries. So at some point, I don't know if they have a replacement battery program or if you just have to buy a whole new grip. But the batteries are going to die. Um, over time, you're going to start getting less and less charge. Uh, the motors are probably going to die eventually. I don't know how long it's going to take, but eventually that thing's going to die. So which one should you buy? Easiest one to use is this one. This one's much harder to use. It takes a lot of practice to get good at. It's really hard on your body to use it. That's, you know, maybe a good excuse to hit the gym and do some calisthenics and go for a run every once in a while, which are all things that I sure shit don't do. I would much be, I would be way more inclined to buy one of these second hands, you know, because like I said, they're not going to break unless it's getting gunked up in there and it's like been in the desert or something. Whereas I'd be much more leery to buy one of these second hand, you never know. I'm not telling you what to buy, I don't care what you buy, you know, don't buy anything. This one you can do follow focus too, I didn't even mention that. Uh, you can do follow focus right out of the box with Panasonic cameras. It doesn't work super great, sometimes it steps. Sometimes it's smooth. I don't know exactly why it is sometimes smooth and sometimes not smooth. You can also buy like a separate follow focus that will control with this, but actually have a motor on here that will actually control. So you don't need like, you know, you could use any type of lens on it. So that's kind of cool. However, the practicality of being a single operator trying to pull focus and move the camera, it's pretty, pretty limited. I mean, you'd be doing, you can do some things for sure, but it'd be a very limited type of moves that you could do and actually pull focus. So it's not the most practical thing, so it's kind of cool, but I wouldn't say that's a huge advantage of these versus this. So yeah, not really an advantage, but you do have some extra features on here that you don't necessarily have. This, you know, it's old school. Just It's just a stick with a little thing on it, a gimbal, whatever that is. I don't know what that is. Um, okay. I can't even talk anymore, so thanks for watching this video, whatever, see you later, bye.